Right. All right, let's all get a seat now. Uh, it's always it's a little bit difficult on the first night of camp to figure out what to do. This is what's been on my heart. So take their Bibles. And we're going to, so we're going to get finished early tonight. If you'll give me attention just for a few minutes. I turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. That's a famous scripture for young people. Ecclesiastes is right after Proverbs. It's about in the middle of the Bible. Everybody looking at it? Ecclesiastes 11. Now, we're going, talking got to stop, fellowship got to stop. Give me your attention. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. I'm going to read the last couple of verses of chapter 11 and the first verse of chapter 12. And this is for you. This is in the Bible for you. Look here what it said. Therefore, verse 10, chapter 11, verse 10, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. That'd be a good verse to memorize, wouldn't it? Put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Now, some man said, youth is heat without light, and old age is light without heat. That means you got a lot of energy in front when you're young, you ain't got no sense. And then when you get old, you got a lot of sense and ain't got no energy. My mom said, by the time you learn how to live, it's time to die. And your problem is tonight is you got a lot of energy and desire and want to have fun, but don't have enough sense to know what to do. Unless you'll listen to God and his word. Look at chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. The day is going to come when you're going to sit all day long and hurt and ache, and you'll say, I have no pleasure in this day. So what are we going to do when we're young? I'm going to preach tonight on the 10 biggest problems for young people. I'm just going to name them off right quick tonight. I need, uh, uh, where you at, Ants? Come up here, my associate. Engage is going to help me here tonight. I don't want them to get right here, nothing to get right there. And I want them to help me tonight. And they're going, one of you get there and one of you get there. There you go, that's fine. Right there, that chair. All right? Now, I want you to do this for me. I want you, everybody's, everybody's been to a ball game. Everybody's seen on something on TV where they count down. Ten, nine. Hey, you know, boy, it starts getting exciting as you're going down like that. I did a little research, and I did this at our youth meeting about a year and a half ago uh, on the problems that young people have. And they're talking about on the news. They're talking about in, in colleges and university, all the problems that young people have. Why suicide? Young people want to kill themselves. Why, why is that? I'm going to deal with it tonight. I want you to listen. I'm going to give you the 10 biggest problems that you've got. You listen to every word I say. If somebody beside you punches you, don't even look. That's what I do. If somebody, like if we're praying or something, and somebody tries to get my attention, I keep my head bowed and I pray till we get through. I'm not talking, the devil's using that person to keep you from listening. So ignore them. Don't talk to you. That's why. This is the most important thing you can possibly hear tonight. Now, uh, they're going to help me tonight, and we're going to start with this countdown, and let's do this. Ready? All right. We're going to start with this one, and I want you to tell me what it is. Go ahead, Gabe. This is number 10. Everybody say it. Ready? 10. All right. 10, the number, the worst in that order, in my opinion. If you preachers were doing this message tonight, you might have some of these mixed up and, and out of order. This is just my opinion. I could, be, I could be wrong. I could change my mind about the order of some of these. But they are definitely the 10 biggest ones. Number 10 would be uncertainty about the future. What does that mean? That means young people are growing up in a world today that is very uncertain. You don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen. You hear it on the news, the economy's bad, 
that, that we could have, we could go to war. Our world could be at war tonight by the time I get through preaching. Yeah. That little old, little old chubby boy over in Korea, that guy, he ain't got enough sense to come in out of the rain. And he's wicked. Don't you doubt it for one bit. Now, those, those terrorists in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Iran, the world right now, and kids that are in high school and college know this. All it would take would be for some maniac to push the button. They say that Russia and these other countries have missiles and bombs pointed at the major cities in America, our coastal cities on, on, on either side. And they say that if they push the button, we have, we have intelligence to see it and detect it, and we push our button to fire back at them. And neither one of us would ever know if ours hit. They destroy us, we destroy them. That is capable, the capabilities are there in place for that to happen tonight. We're living in the first generation in our history in America that kids will probably make less money than their mamas and daddies. We're living in a time when there's disease that, that's unbelievable. People, there wasn't no thing, such thing. When we were going to school, when I was in high school, they, they taught us in high school, they said if you mess around and, and have, have uh, sexual intercourse and all kinds of sin before you're married or outside of your marriage, there's STDs. You know what an STD is? Sexually transmitted disease. That's a venereal disease. There were two of those diseases that you could catch. How many there are tonight? 50. 50. And once you get one of them disease in your body, it never goes away. You're stuck with it. Your future husband, future wife, other, any other people you've met, listen, that's a scary thought. You listen to me tonight? Uncertainty about the future. Getting a job. Safety. You know, li listen, you kids, most of y'all live in country, well, most of our kids live out in the country and they're pretty safe. And I'm, a lot of kids in America live in cities and stuff. They don't know if they go out at night if they're going to come back. If somebody just drive down the road and shoot you, blow your brains out. People, these drive-by shooting, just kill somebody just to be killing. It's a dangerous time. It's a very scary time. Uncertainty about the future. There are 70 people a day just killed on our highway just by drunk drivers. There are 10 murders every day in Washington, D.C., our capital. 10 people every day just murdered, shot, stabbed. Uh, not to mention overdosing on drugs. Chicago is even worse. $30 billion a year spent on alcohol, 30 on drug, uh, uh, children uh, on drugs and, and stuff like that. Uncertainty, it's a scary time. That's hard for y'all to deal with. But then let's go down a little bit. Number nine, ready? One, two, three, nine. nine. Say it, nine. nine. What would number nine be? That would be our erosion of national pride and identity. Now, now, what does that mean? Let me explain that to you. What that means is years ago, back the generation before ours, back Brother Charles, his generation coming up, before, even, before we even came up, yeah. our kids were taught when you go to school of the morning, you stand, you put your hand over your heart, and you pledge allegiance to the American flag. They were taught that for years. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You said that every day just about at school. We were taught this is our country. We, we serve our country. We believe in our country. Uh, right, it's not always right. Right or wrong, it's still our country and we love it and we'll live in it and we'll fight for it and die for it if necessary. We were taught that for years and years and years. You know, back in his day when he was growing up, you went to school, you heard, the, you seen the Bible, 
you went to church, you seen the Bible, and then when you went home, you seen the Bible. You're the same Bible you saw at church was the same Bible you saw at home and the same Bible you saw at school. It ain't like that nowadays. That stuff is long gone. They are at work right now while I speak to you tonight. Their forces are at work. The people who train the teachers who teach you in high school, they are being trained. Get rid of our loyalty to our country. Get rid of that flag. They are burning the flag. They are being disrespectful. And by the way, I'll go ahead and say this. I know some of you are going to want to hear it say it. So I'll say it already. The football player ain't got enough guts to stand up and salute our flag. They ought to fire his sorry self and find them somebody that will serve our country to play football. Amen. You say, well, when I see the American flag, I want to spit on it. That's because your mind's been polluted. Listen, we, you can go to McDonald's because we're under that flag. I can stand up here and preach whatever I want to because our boys fought our freedom under that flag. I can open my Bible. Listen, we can go wherever we want, do whatever we want, worship however we want because we live in the United States of America. And I'm telling you tonight, they joke about it. They make fun of it. Did you see the other day where some nut climbed the Statue of Liberty? On, on, on the 4th of July and they had to call the authorities out and block it off and like 4,000 families couldn't get to see the Statue of Liberty on the 4th of July because of that nuthead climbing up our protesting. And I like what old Trump said, and I'm not, I'm not politicking for him. He's crazy too. Uh, but I, listen, on. you know what he said? He said, I just left her up there. <laughs> I said, hey, amen. I just put a net down there so she wouldn't get killed. And I said, I ain't fooling with coming up there and rescuing you. Anybody crazy enough to climb the Statue of Liberty? I ought to be just left up there. I'm telling you tonight, our pride, our national pride is on. And you say, well, those, those football players have a right. Yes, sir, they sure do. They have a right on their own time to go out and protest, do whatever they want to or don't do whatever they want to. They do not. If they're working for a company, if they're working for the NFL and they're representing their company, they do not have a right to just say, hey, I'll just do whatever I want to and not do whatever I want to. Our national pride is eroding. Now, let's go down one more. Ready? Number eight. Number eight. Would you stand up there, short gauge? Ready? One, two, three. Eight. eight. What is number eight? Number eight would be this. Everybody listening? Materialism. What's that? That means our generation of kids, you have so much without having to work for it that is ruining you. I never in my life seen a more lazy, sorry, dumb bunch of kids in my whole life. Lord have mercy. Can't cook, can't clean, don't know how. I bet you these girls sitting right here tonight don't know how to clean a bathroom. Ooh, ooh, I'm not touching that. Well, somebody got to. And hey, listen, I, I know a girl said they don't know how to cook. They couldn't boil water, brother. I mean, they, could, they couldn't put a pan on the stove and turn it on and heat it up. And anyway, one girl got married and she called her mom. She said, Mama, somebody played an awful trick on me. And they, she said, what? They said, well, they bought me uh, something to clean the house with. It's, it's this big, long stick and it's got straw sticking out the end of it. She said, you idiot, that's a broom. She said, well, they didn't even send the cord to it, Mama. Can't plug it up. That's what's wrong with the kid. Hey, don't know how to run a weed eater? Yeah, all boys in here and most girls should know how to weed eat. Ain't that right? Oh, where's, where you at, Ashton? Where's Ashton at? Where's a hard worker young man? There he is right there. With the he came over there last week and won't work. And he, I said, do you work? He said, yeah. And I said, let me see your hands. <laughs> Hold your hands out like that. See, you're supposed, to have, you're supposed to have little hard spots right there, boys. On Every boy in here ought to have little hard spots right there on his hand. If a boy's got soft hands, <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to be around him if I was you. 
I started to warn the girls. Maybe I should warn the boys. Stay away from him. <laughs> you're slow, but you're going to. Listen, hey, y'all learn how to wash a car. Y'all learn how to wash a car. Do you know how to wash a car, boys? Okay. That's how you got the camp, ain't it? I heard, I heard about that. That's how, they, that's how they made their money to come here this week. Listen, hey, you need to learn how to wash a car. You need to learn how to vacuum. You need to learn how to make up a bed. You need to learn how to wash a load of clothes and dry them and fold them and put them in a closet or, a, or hang them up. Here's the way some of y'all clean your room. Here's the way you clean your room. Throw it up under there. 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 Okay, Mom, it's clean. You just throw it up under the bed. That's materialism. Ethan asked me one day, we seen an old car, Rob, we seen an old car going down the road, and he said, Brother Danny, when you was a teenager, he said, would, would you drive that? I said, you better believe I would. If, would it roll? Listen, if it rolled, I'd drive it. These boys now, I wouldn't drive that. Buddy, I would. And I still would. If you have to have a sharp, fancy car to make you feel like you can get a girl, you need help, son. You need help. A real man can get a girlfriend whether he got a car or not. Ain't that right? That's right. Bicycle belt for two, buddy. I, I come down like that. It'll work just as good. I'm telling you, listen, you don't have, you don't have to have the fanciest car first coming. You don't have to have $200 tennis shoes. Are you out of your mind? $100 jeans? You're crazy, brother. Listen, materialism is killing our kids. We had boys that went to school with me that were really good basketball players and couldn't be on the team. You know why? Because their daddy, they had to go straight home from school and work on the farm, milk cows, do stuff till dark, and they couldn't play ball. It ain't like nowadays where daddy leaves everything and mama leaves everything and they travel here and travel here and travel ball, travel ball, travel ball, go here, go here. Oh, honey, you can do it. Oh, honey, you can do it. Now, there's nothing wrong with the kid playing sports, but it ain't, the kid ain't first, the sports ain't first. Years ago, people had to work, brother. They had to work tonight. You know what's wrong with y'all? You know what's wrong, y'all? You never had to work for nothing. That's why you don't take care of it. You won't take, you don't appreciate it. You work your own self and make your own money and buy your own stuff, you'll take care of it a little bit better. If everything's handed to you, that's a big problem that you've got. You know what drives, you know what I say nowadays? Come on, brother. Kids that all they want to do, all they want to do is go somewhere. I want to get, I'm bored. I'm bored. Listen, when I was little, we didn't have but one car and daddy took it and went to work. We couldn't just say, I want to go somewhere. I rode a bicycle down in Hoppy Tom. That was it. As far as you could go. You say, well, you didn't have, you didn't have a trampoline? No. No. Well, I never seen a trampoline when I was little. We jumped in the creek. We went down to the creek took big rocks and dammed it up yeah. and said, uh, oh. and we dammed up the creek and we, it'd come up a little bit and we'd say, boy, tomorrow we're going to come down and go swimming and a big rain would come and there'd go the dam right down the, down the creek. Yeah. We caught crawfish. Oh. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'll call you down when you need to be called down. We're going to start off right. I ain't your mom and daddy. Now listen. You hear me? You can't. You ever heard of a tire swing? Yeah. What's a tire swing? You take a tire, put a rope on it, and swing. It's fun. We had a slingshot. We take a stick, looks like that, there two rubber bands on it, pow, I'm gonna pop you in the head. <laughs> and it was fun. I had a bow and arrow, and I come around the house one day, it's no lie, I'll tell you about some of my great shots. I had a few in my life. <laughs> I, true, I come around the house one day, and there was a Whoa. snake crossing the road, 
as far as from here down there at the bottom of them steps. And I come around the house and Daddy said, there's a snake, son. And I went, boom. And there I went all the way down the front yard and went, stuck right through that snake. I said, I got him. He crawled off down in the weeds with that arrow sticking through him. Sure did. And you know, kids nowadays don't even know how to shoot a bow and arrow. Get your BB gun. <laughs> Amen. Get your dog, brother. Learn how to take care of it. You say, what y'all doing is hot. We got the water hose out and squirt at each other. I remember standing when it rained and sitting out there and let the water drip off the house yeah. and drink it and it tastes like shingles. <laughs> Hide and go seek. One, two, three, four, five, then a hundred, you know, and, take, and go find them. Learn how to play. Learn how to play. Listen, if some of y'all, if, you, if your Xbox tore up or your video game or you lost your phone, You'd, you'd be in the nut house. You wouldn't know how to control yourself. You could, you'd start going into DTs. They'd have to give you some Riddling or whatever it is uh, to calm you down. Listen, you don't have. You can make you something to play. Arm wrestle. Everybody thinks nowadays. I gotta have this. I gotta have that. Come on, brother, Mama, I want this. You know, an Under Armour shirt, and I got one. I didn't buy it. I didn't buy one of them things. One of my daughters bought it for me. For, for birthday or something, some, some, I bought cheap stuff. And they said, an Under Armour shirt is $30, just a little old shirt. And honest to goodness, you can't tell the difference in that and what they sell at Burlington Outlet or Target or even Walmart or a cheap store. If you saw them, you couldn't tell the difference in the material. You don't have to have every expensive thing that comes out and pressure your parents. That'll ruin you. I know kids, I know people that buy their kids brand name everything. I think that's terrible. I think it's awful. I think it's disgraceful. I think it's a waste of money and you're teaching them that they, they can have anything they want and spoiling them. Materialism. Number seven. Number seven. Ants. Ready. Here we go. Seven. One more time. Seven. All right. Thank you, man. Ants. Number seven. You know what your problem is, number seven? Growing up too fast. Growing up too fast. It's so sad today to see what kids see and know and do at such a young age. Putting lipstick and eyeshadow and high heel, little little girls, seven and eight and nine and 10 years old, walking around like they're some kind of prostitute downtown Atlanta somewhere and they're 10 years old. What's she gonna be when she's 14? What's she gonna do when she's 15? What's she gonna do? Hey, hey, listen, uh, growing up too fast, be a kid Why you got a chance, amen? That dance mom, woman, old, old Abby, Fatty Abby, whatever her name is. Uh, they, listen, they ought to put her in prison. She had 11-year-old girls up yeah. dancing. Yeah. Hey, 11-year-old girls ain't got no business up dancing, twisting their hips in front of her. Oh, by the way, you 15, 16-year-old girls ain't got no business doing that either. You know that? I mean, if it ain't for sale, quit advertising it. Well, we're starting off nice on the first night, ain't we? The hard preaching comes on during the week. Uh, uh, we just deal with these little soft issues on the first night. But it's the truth. It's the truth. You don't need to look like a Hollywood whore when you go to school and go out and run. If you have to act like that and dress like that to get somebody to look at you, you need to understand you need to get your heart right with God. Hey. Growing up too fast. Here's... And it's your mama's fault. I mean, I ain't fussing at y'all. It's your mama's fault. I sat there on that Dr. Phil. And mama said, I don't know what I can do with her. She sneaks out the window and she goes and sees her boyfriend and I tell her not to. And she went and she says, I do what I want to. It's my life. It's my life. I can do whatever I want to. Dr. Phil, how about that? Cash me outside, dude. I, I, mean, I mean, listen, they, that's what they do. Now, I'm going to tell you what that little brat needs. 
You want me to tell you what that little cash me outside girl needs? She needs somebody to take her and bend her over, like the Bible says, and hit her outside <laughs> with, a, with a hickory switch. Like the Bible said, somebody spared that rod and ruined that kid growing up too fast. Years ago, you grew up seeing Judy Garland. Even when I was growing up, is Judy Garland said, somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. Dun, 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 dun. And everybody grew up there. Like, you know what you grew up now hearing? California girl, the Katy Perry, yeah. the sleazebag Perry, Lady Doo Doo. Corporate pedophilia is what that is. Child abuse. Number six. Number six. Ready? Six. Again? Six. six. Number six. Educational disparity or problems at school. I guarantee you there's some young people here tonight that have problems at school. I feel sorry for you having problems. I feel sorry for you having to put up with what you got to put up with at school. Yeah. I really do. Problems at school. Bullying is almost universal now, boys and girls. You know why people bully people so much now? Come on, it's the depravity of the human heart, unbridled by the Lord and the Bible and preaching. The human heart, unbridled. You know, what, you know what people do when they're full of the devil? They pick on other people. Push them around. Hit them. Knock them down. Let me tell you about a young man by the name of Daniel. Daniel was about in the seventh or eighth grade. He was bullied at school. Every, the other boys picked on him all the time. One boy just went up one time and punched him right in the stomach at school. They told him. They made him lick the, the window on the bus when it was froze. You know, your tongue will stick to that, that ice and that frozen window. Yeah. Daniel's life, he felt like he was living in hell on earth. He'd go home, come back the next day, they'd pick on him again, sneak up behind him and hit him in the head. They dumped trash on him. They ganged up on him after school. Everybody here knows, kids, that that happens to if you go to a public school. It made him sick. They told him one night, they said, why don't you just do the world a favor and get you a gun and blow your brains out. And one night, Daniel went home and he sent out a text message to all his friends. You don't have to worry about me no more. I'm going to take my life tonight. And that's exactly what he did. He ended his life because of the pressure of the kids at school and I'm telling you, I, 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 I guess I had it. I don't know. I don't remember it that bad. But I, I know tons of kids that have done terrible, crazy things they paid for the rest of their life just because of a bunch of idiots at school dared them to do something or made fun of them or, or dared them to go somewhere or do something you're not supposed to. Let me tell you all something, kids. You are an individual. You don't have to do nothing that nobody tells you to. You don't have to go nowhere that them bunch of nuts want to go. You don't have to do what they do. You don't have to drink their beer. You don't have to smoke their dope. You don't have to do that stuff. You don't have, you say, well, if I don't, I won't have no friends. That ain't friends. That's enemies. You ain't got no friends if that your friend trying to get you to act like that and do something wrong. Unbelievable. The pressure y'all are under to look a certain way, act a certain way, talk a certain way, Listen, watch certain movies, listen to certain music. You say, if I don't, I won't fit in. And everybody in here wants to fit in. You may say you don't, but you do. We all do. I don't, you don't want to be a weirdo. But i tell you what, there's going to come a time when you've got to make up your mind, listen, I don't care what they think. You say, well, Brother Danny, people think you're crazy. Okay, I think they're crazy. We'll find out one day, won't we? We'll find out who's crazy. Educational disparity, number five. Ants. Number five. Ready? Five. One, two, three. Five. Thank you. 
know what it is? Depression. Never before have many kids been depressed as they are now. Honest to goodness, when I went to school, I never heard of anybody being depressed. People ask me, Brother Danny, you ever been depressed? I don't know if I ever not. I really don't. If it means you feel like terrible and you have to look up and see the bottom and want to die, yeah. But you get over it. I've felt like that before. I've felt like I didn't have no friends. I felt like there wasn't nothing to live for. That life, it happens. Everybody has to go through that. That we're living, in, we're, we're living in, you're so spoiled, you're so, you've got it so good and so easy, you can't stand any little old thing that's uncomfortable or bothers you, Lord, it's pitiful. Listen, for years we went to camp, no air condition, none. I had at camp for a week, 40 boys, 40 teenage boys in a, in a building about as from here to that wall over there, this up here, 40 boys, no bathroom, no water, no shower, no air conditioning, no windows, a box, 40, a week. You, you had, it knocked you down when you walked in there and smelled so bad. It was dirty underwear and sweat and bl- no telling what else, blood and, and Lord have mercy, snot and everything all over the floor and nasty. And we, we took our bath in the lake Washed, dived back in, and had the best time ever was. And now, you know, these boys, uh, it's hot. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it ain't no wonder the least little old thing don't go your way. You get depressed. You know what gets you depressed? Boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend. That's why so many kids cut. Cutters, emos, you know, they, they cut their self. And the reason they cut their self is because they say they're depressed and it, and it gives them some kind of release. According to that definition, I've never been depressed. I'm telling you, I've felt bad before, but I ain't never wanted to cut myself. That's about the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Cut yourself? Cut somebody else? Not yourself, you nut. Are you crazy? You say, but I feel so bad. Well, that's sure going to make you feel better. Self-esteem. Everything's the end of the world. You've been in love five days, and then you let your boyfriend mess around with you, and then you break up, and you think, I'm going to die. I loved him so much. Now, let me tell you what happened to you. You got tricked by the devil, honey. The devil tricked you. That's right. You didn't have enough sense to know it was the devil. Yeah. It was the devil in him, and then the devil got in you, and you got tricked by the devil. That's not falling in love and getting your heart broke. You just got tricked. Wise up. Say, hey, I learned my lesson. I'll do better that next time. Listen, life is hard, kids. Life is hard, and it's going to get harder. It never, everything never goes good. Ask Brother Charles, been saved seven years. It ain't never all smooth, is it? There's always battles. There's always something. It's always going to be your sister, your brother, your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your boss man, somebody at school. There's always going to be difficulty. We all can get it. You've got to make up your mind by the grace of God. I'm going to live right. I'm going to serve God, and I'm going to do the right thing and not let the devil get me down all the time. Depression. Number four, and I'm winding these down. You've been waiting on this one. Number four, ready? Four. One, two, three. Four. You've been waiting on it. Social media. The biggest enemy some of y'all got is the internet and your phone and your social media. That's the biggest enemy some of y'all got tonight. Some of y'all don't even remember when there wasn't no such thing. I remember the first time I saw somebody talking on a cell phone. I was at the airport and I was going somewhere and I saw somebody go, uh, somebody go by and they, and they were talking on the phone. I said, good night, How, what are they doing? Is that a walkie-talkie? And they said, it's a phone. I said, a phone you can walk around with? It ain't got no wires? And the next thing you know, now, now, well, I, I ain't got time to get into that tonight, but your phone... 
Kids are getting in trouble by their phone. Let's talk just for a minute about a young lady by the name of Tammy. She's 13 years old, Tammy. She had been messaging a, a young man who she thought was 18 but was, was a lot older. And he told her he was 18 and they met on whatever yuns do. Uh, Snapchat and Instagram and messaging and she said, oh, I like you. Oh, you're beautiful. Oh, really? Oh, thank you. Oh, maybe we could meet sometime. Oh, I don't know. My mom might not like that. Oh, come on. It'll be fine. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And right there is where you get in trouble, girls, because the next thing you know, he starts saying, you sure are pretty. You sh and you, you're all so dumb, you think, oh, he means it. <laughs> we'll do this later on during the week, but boys tell that very same thing to the other girls. I know, I mean, I know it for a fact. I've done it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you better listen to me. I'm being honest with you. It's that same line of bull, brother, to every girl they date. I had two girls talking one time. She said, but he told me that he, the sun sets. And he think, she said, he told me the same thing. <laughs> they hear a line in a movie and they use it on you and you're dumb enough to believe that. Because <laughs> you want to believe so bad that you're pretty and somebody loves you. You want to believe. And I, I feel sorry for you. I'd hate to be you. I would. But you know what? Tammy started messaging this guy. Back, forth, back, forth. And she finally talked her into meeting him. She snuck out of the house and they were to meet downtown. She, uh, she's a cheerleader, I think, or something like that. And, they, and she made him after cheerleading practice or something. And two weeks later, they found her body 80 miles from home, cut to death, murdered in a ditch, raped and murdered. Because she thought that that boy cared about her. See, that's what you're messing with nowadays. You do know, you younger girls know in here, you do know that when you pass a truck on the interstate now, like these big trucks, you know sometimes there are girls your age inside there going to Atlanta to be sold like dogs and, and cattle. It's all over our country. I'm telling you, the devil ain't your friend and the world ain't your friend and it don't care about you, girls. Right. You say, but I just, I just saw him. I mean, I just think everything's so wonderful. It ain't wonderful. It's a wicked world. It's a perverted hellhole. And the only way you can miss it is to be right with God. Number three. Number three. Number three, Anna. Ready? Three. three. One, two, three. Three. Thank you. Number three is drugs and alcohol. I don't know why we say drugs and alcohol because alcohol is a drug. It is a drug. By age 14, most young people have smoked cigarettes. 65% have tried alcohol. 25% have already had binge drinking. That means drinking so much that they're drunk, throwing up, can't control herself. That's pitiful. That's pitiful. You don't even have enough sense yet to fill out an income tax report and out getting drunk. You think you're smart enough to handle liquor and beer. You ain't, not, ain't none of us in here smart enough to handle liquor, beer, pot, uh, meth, crystal meth, cocaine, crack, heroin, nothing. There ain't none of us in here can handle that stuff. 25% of 12th graders get high regularly. 40% drink alcohol regularly. Boys lose their football career. Boys, people lose their, their, their job opportunities, college scholarships, and everything else. Parents who, if you have friends that drink, you're going to drink. And I mean, basically, it all going to boil down to whoever people you hang around. Whoever you hang around, you're going to be like them. If they're dumb, you're going to be dumb. You know what I'd do if I was you? I'd find somebody smart and older and right with God and hang around them and learn from them. I don't, we don't, some of us men in here, some of us men in here tonight, all you men here, Rob, uh, Ron, Jason, all that, we don't want y'all to make some mistakes we've made. 
Well, listen, talk, listen to us. We'll tell you. You're going down the wrong road. If you say, oh, I'm going to go out, I'm going to party, man, and I'm going to live it up. Yeah, and there's hell to pay one of these days, too. I mean, it comes back to you. It comes back to you, and it will come back to you. Come back to you. My, my cousin, some of y'all know who I'm talking about, Carrie, and, and, and y'all. Me and Kelly went to visit her in the hospital in Asheville not long ago. Marilyn said she's about to die. We went in the hospital and there she lay, 30 something years old. She's laying in the hospital like this and her leg from there to there, it, it was split open. It looked like a watermelon, honestly. Just cut open like that from just the blood and the, and the gut. You know what she'd been doing? Sticking a needle in here trying to find a vein because she done shot up so much in her veins. You know, after you put them needles in your arms so much, they ain't know where to put one. And somehow or another, she couldn't find a vein. They put them in her neck. They put them here, shoot up here. And she put, and it got, and something got infected. And we went in there and I said, Shana, what in the world is wrong with you? She said, hey, Brother Danny. She, I'm her cousin. She calls me Brother Danny. But I was her pastor most of her life. She said, hey, Brother Danny, hey, Kelly. I said, Shana, what's wrong with you? I don't, I don't know. I said, Shana, don't you? You know, you know it's going to kill you, right? And you're going to die. You're going to die. Listen, this is how bad she had got. I said, Shana, you're going to die. I said, where's that boy? Her boyfriend, they put him in jail. He hit her in the, with a hammer. He hit her in the back with a hammer. And they put him in jail. She said, well, when he gets out, I said, you going to take him back? Listen, he hit you with a hammer. You nut. If a guy hits you with a hammer, what's he going to do next time? He'll kill you if him drugs don't kill you first. Right. And she said, well, he's got issues. I, I do too. Just like, just like, just like, here's the way they get. Here's the way drugs will get you. It'll get you where you say, I don't care. If I die, I die. Living's hell, so why not just go ahead and die? That's what you get. That's what you get to where you think it don't. If I die tonight, who cares? I don't even care if I live or die. I've had people tell me that. And I said, Shane, please, please listen to me. I said, they're going to read your name in the paper. Your name's going to be in the paper. 37 years old, overdosed, uh, uh, died of, of this, died of that, uh, in, in her sleep, something like that. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Look, look, people, if there's 100 people in line right here and every one of them goes out that door, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 95 and I keep on, it ain't going to happen to me. It ain't going to happen to me. 76, 75, 74, 73. So yes, it is going to happen to me. I'm going the same way they went. And as thousands of people die on drugs on every week, overdoses by the hundreds every week, don't you think it won't happen to you? You ain't no different. You ain't no better than they are. I mean, I mean, you're, you're flirting with something that's going to kill you. Number two. Number two. Say it. Two. One, two, three. Two. Is the breakdown of the home. And mom and daddy go their separate ways. Once the devil has your family torn apart, he has an easy way in to get in your room at night. Once the devil has mama over there and daddy over there, or you don't know where daddy is, or mama's got some yahoo she met on the internet dating him and a different boyfriend every month or two, that's when the devil's going to get you. That's I'm telling you, that's when the devil's going to get you. I don't understand it, but I've seen it a million times when the parents break up. It's like, it's like a, I don't know, it's like leaving a door open or something. The devil just gets in and get, kids grow up bitter, grow up mad, grow up sometimes with weird feelings. 28 million kids are living with one or no parents. I want to do something tonight, and I don't want to embarrass nobody. It's, it's not, I mean, we all, it all happens to all of us. 
I've been through family trouble myself, so don't, don't feel ashamed. How many kids in here tonight do not live with your real mom and your real dad both? I want you to raise your hand, please. Hold on. That's, that's over half. That's over half. Thank you. You can put them down. And I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I know it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. And don't you feel bad about it. It's not your fault. But I'll tell you what you better do. You better learn how to pray. And you better learn how to pray for your parents, for both of them. They both love you. Maybe the devil's working on them. Maybe the devil is, is trying to tear them apart to get mess their life up. You love them both. You pray for them both. You ask God to work in them both. The breakdown of the home. Studies show that kids are way less likely to get in trouble who eat supper with their parents two or three times a week. Just something like that. Isn't that something? God made the family unit. Mom, dad, children. That's his plan to protect you till you get old enough to go out on your own and start your own path. I don't think kids ought to live out on their own. I don't think you have no business going out two or three of you and getting you an apartment. And you know, when you're 18, 19, 20, live a while. You live with your parents, you fall in love, you get married, then you marry, then you start your own family. That's the way it did in the Bible, and that's the way you're supposed to do it. Number one, I'm through. Number one, who's got number one? Ready? Say it. One, one two, three. One. This is going to shock you. And most of you kids ain't going to understand this. And I say this and I'm through. You say, my goodness, what could be worse than drugs, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and all that stuff you preached about? I'll tell you where it is. In my opinion, the worst thing that's happened to kids in this country is cold, dead, lifeless churches. And the reason I say that, let me tell you the reason I say that. You say, you mean to tell me you put that in front of the home? Listen, brother, listen to me, listen. It don't matter if a person says, hey, I'm gonna quit taking drugs, I'm gonna quit drinking, I'm gonna get naked. If you go to the house of God and there ain't nothing to turn to and there's no God and there's no hope, brother, that's, that's the most helpless feeling in the whole world. A lot of people say, I wanna change my life, but what is their preacher? What is their preacher? I'll tell you what they are. I'll tell you what's real. There is a God in heaven. He does care about you. He is real. He is alive. He does care about you. You've got something better to turn to. It was real church that got me. I'm going to say something some of you preachers may disagree with, but think about it before you kill me. I hear preach people say all the time, home more important than church. I'm not, I'm not diminishing the, the, the home. But I'm telling you something. Jesus didn't die for the home. He died for the church. And when he comes back, he ain't coming back for the home. He's coming back for the church. Don't, don't get mad at me. Just think about it for a while. Scripturally. Scripturally. I understand. I preached it too. So don't, I'm not trying to start no controversy. I preached it too. I understand churches are built out of homes. I understand without good homes, you can't have church. I got all that. But I'm telling you, if there ain't nothing at the house of God, you ain't going to have much of a home. There's got to be an old-fashioned uh, church. There's got to be an old leather lung preacher who believes the King James Bible. And there's a heaven, there's a hell. Not a bunch of rock and roll mess and, you know, dark lights and a, a blessed nightclub atmosphere. You can find a nightclub out there. You can find a rock show out there. They ought to come to church for an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival meeting where it gets down in your heart and changes you and makes you a different person. Dennis of church. Thank God there's still a God. Thank God there's still hope. Thank God there's still a heaven. Thank God there's still grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know what you need? You need an old-fashioned dose of old-time religion and Holy Ghost power. That'll do what nothing else can do. And the worst enemy you've got is dead religion. Dead religion. I was ironing one day, and I was ironing clothes like this, and I went like that and burnt my, that iron hit my hand, arm right there. 
and it burned a little stripe. And I'm telling you, that hurt, and that hurt, and I tried to put something on it. And I tell you, I went, I went to bed that night, and it was still hurting. And I started thinking about hellfire, screaming, burning, no ointment, no medicine, nothing. Say, you start thinking that, looking at it like right there, our problems down here ain't really too bad. This girl called me one night. I don't know, I've seen her, never would know her if she walked in there. She said, she's 19 years old. She said, is this Danny Castle? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, ain't you the one that does that thing? It's back when I used to preach on Marilyn Manson a long time ago. I had that Manson video thing. She said, ain't you the one that does that? And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, do you believe in the devil's real? I said, I sure do. She said, well, I'm, I'm a Satanist. She said, I'd give my life to the devil. And I said, well, let me ask you something. you believe in hell? She said, yeah, but I'm willing to burn for the devil. She's 19. That's how messed up her head was. She said, I'm willing to burn for him. And I said, I'm going to tell you what you do. When we hang up, go in the kitchen and turn the, the stove, the eye, that round thing on that stove on red, orange, hot, and put your hand down on it. You hold it there, two, you can't hold it there one second. You'd scream for the next three or four days. You'd have to go to the hospital. And you're willing to burn for somebody that don't even care about you? That's how messed up people are nowadays. I'll show you some more of that on Thursday night. You'll be shocked. That's the enemy, John. I hate to tell you this, but this world ain't no big Disneyland. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. This ain't no game, y'all. This is serious business.